Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. My name is Srinath Midhi. I'm a principal solution architect with SAP Focus at AWS. Today, I have Venkat with me. Venkat, can you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hello everyone. This is Venkat here. I'm a senior partner solutions architect supporting SAP partners uh, on AWS. Thank you, Venkat. Today, we, we both are here to discuss HADR architecture patterns for SAP workloads on AWS. As many of you know, there are more than 5,000 customers that are running their uh, workloads on AWS uh, that takes advantage of uh, uh, AWS global infrastructure. Uh, Venkat, can you help us to understand the reference architecture for uh, HA and DR for SAP customers that are looking to achieve highest resiliency, please? Absolutely. So before I talk about um, SAP high availability, I'll take a step back and um, explain what is AWS Global Infrastructure. Um, so when you talk about AWS Global Infrastructure, we have an AWS region, uh, which is a physical location in the world. And uh, with, within a region, you have uh, two or more uh, availability zones, which are separated by a meaningful distance of 60 miles or 100 kilometers. And these availability zones are uh, connected with high latency, um, sorry, low latency and high bandwidth connectivity, Got it. which enables uh, customers to deploy production uh, SAP systems to achieve high availability. And another aspect is um, within each availability zone, you have one or more discrete data centers, okay. uh, which have uh, their own, uh, you know, networking, cooling, and uh, you know, infrastructure uh, facilities. That way, they are totally isolated from each other. And uh, the way we achieve high availability for SAP is by leveraging this AWS global infrastructure. Got it. Now, uh, the way we do it is by actually protecting uh, the single points of failure within an SAP landscape, okay. and which are usually our uh, ASCS instance mm -hmm. and a HANA, uh, or HANA or any other database instance. Uh, so let's uh, look at how we are leveraging this AWS global infrastructure to achieve high availability for SAP. So if you look at this uh, architecture, on the left-hand side you have um, a customer's data center, which mm -hmm. is on-premises, mm -hmm. where uh, customers, IT teams, or business users are connecting to SAP systems um, uh, using SAP GUI or HANA Studio, for example. Mm -hmm. So the way they reach out uh, to the systems that are hosted on AWS is via their corporate DNS, and um, and through our uh, you know, Route 53, uh, if they prefer to use it, Got right? It. And um, the way we are protecting, um, you know, the single points of failure is by leveraging multiple availability zones here. If you see, I have AZ1 and I have AZ2. Mm -hmm. um, I have the primary applications. Um, when I say primary applications, like your uh, ASCS, your Central Services Instance, and your primary HANA database, running on AZ1. Mm -hmm. And I have replication set up, for example, from HANA database to your secondary availability zone. Got it. Um, and this, uh, you know, primary and secondary databases are protected using a cluster. And this can be a placemaker cluster that's offered by SUSE or REL, okay. or it can be, uh, you know, provided by uh, third-party uh, solutions like SIOS or any other third-party providers, right? Similarly, your ASCS is also protected by having an ERS, which is your NQ replication server. Mm -hmm. And the NQ um, table is you know, replicated um, over to ERS. And this uh, ASCS and ERS pair is again protected by your cluster. Got so it. that is how, uh, in case of an event in AZ1, you are still able to you know, fail over to your secondary instances that are available on uh, AZ2 and um, you know, still continue to maintain your connectivity to system, that thereby achieving your high availability. Excellent, this is a great reference architecture to achieve uh, high resiliency by SAP customers that are running their uh, critical applications. One follow-up question, I'm curious to understand, uh, how would uh, uh, the business user connect to this uh, application that's running on AWS in case of a failure? Sure. I'm glad you asked that question, right? Because understanding the network pattern in case of a HA setup is really critical uh, when we talk about high availability especially. Uh, so as I mentioned, your user is connecting from SAP GUI via DNS. Mm -hmm. And uh, within the VPC, we leverage concepts called overlay IP address and route tables. And we also use a network load balancer, which is a managed service. Mm -hmm. So essentially, um, 
the the uh, connector or the connection string uh, for your SAP GUI would be your DNS name of your uh, network load balancer, okay. which points to the overlay IP address, which in turn, with the help of route tables, get routed to your active instance at any given time. So in case of an event, uh, there's a failover, your cluster automatically updates your route tables and your uh, NLB is still pointing to your active instance and thereby um, you know, your high availability is achieved and your uh, customer user experience is uh, pretty much seamless. Wow, that's amazing that uh, all these complex configurations are automatically managed by uh, clusters within AWS. Uh, that's a huge uh, benefit to the customers. Absolutely. Uh, that they don't need to do anything manually in that uh, case. One last question is like, uh, uh, what is your recommendation for customers that are looking to extend this and, you know, achieve uh, or design a disaster recovery for their SAP workloads? Um, again, the same con uh, construct applies, right? We can leverage or customers leverage AWS global infrastructure uh, to achieve their business continuity goals. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, as you can see here, uh, customers can use a secondary region wherein they can provision their um, EC2 instances to run their SAP systems and HANA databases. And thereby, if there is a natural disaster that is impacting your primary region, you still have your capability to you know, recover your SAP systems in your secondary region. And um, there are the different uh, you know, uh, DR patterns, for example, uh, like pilot light, uh, you know, warm standby, et cetera. So we'll, we'll create a separate video which will talk about these you know, uh, HANA a specific DR patterns um, and you know, talk about the operational aspects of achieving your business continuity goals. Got it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Venkat. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope uh, you enjoyed uh, this video and learned something new today. Uh, keep, keep watching these videos. Thank you.